we are playing Stanley Parable today. I don't know anything about it. I won't be trying to 100% it today. We'll maybe return to it. But yeah, I have no clue what's going on. Ooh, I like that noise. Yeah, Gotham, Goth, Gotham. <laughs> Sorry. It doesn't really work. Have you played the Stanley Parable before? Why are you asking Happy me? Happy 10 months. That's an invasive question. Hi, Audrey. Happy 10 months. Sorry, I don't know why I said hi. Too much sleep. <laughs> I already said hi to you. Thank you so much. Why do you want to know what time it is? No! Why? I got beef with this game. Okay. Hi, Natalie. <laughs> um... Is this the office? And then this will work and those go to ba doo doo. Oh, nice tan. The end is never the. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment. I mean, I think I would like that. As though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. I would enjoy that. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. What? Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. What? He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions. This, him wait, this is Jackson in his work right now. Never in all his years at the company. <laughs> oh my God, Jackson. This, this is you isolation. alone in the office Something right now. Was very clearly <laughs> so wrong. scared for you. Shocked, frozen <laughs> solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. What is happening? But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk <gasps> and stepped out of his office. I'm Stanley. What is happening? A pencil sharpener. <laughs> Titan, thank you for gifting us up to the community. So we are playing in live, a live action version of Jackson at his office right now. Thank you, Titan. I hope you're doing well. Can I click anything? Can I use that? I got an achievement. You can't jump. <laughs> I just got that steam achievement. You can't jump, bitch. I don't know. Man. All of his co-workers were gone. Ah! What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. <laughs> no matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace hey, of his co-workers. Hey, Winter. Hi, Bumble. Um, is this a horror game? Am I going through open doors? Am I trying to open doors? 420, blaze it! Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> this is that written in? 
No way, dude. <laughs> no. I'm <laughs> Okay, I don't like this guy. I got beef with him. Who's talking to me right now? <laughs> I want to go in here. Oh my god, this is like the back when room. Stanley came to a set of two open doors. He entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. <laughs> I can't be told what to do. I can't be told what to do. Is this? Oh, here we go. Ah, yes. Truly a room worth admiring. Yeah. It had really been worth the detour after all. <laughs> just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. It is. It's Stanley gorgeous. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Wow. Oh, you want me to stand? Yes. <laughs> really, really worth it being here in the room. <laughs> room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings they're nice really worth it. it's nice okay i can get a cold drink if i want at this point stan is obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality it's possible that this is why everyone left <laughs> it eating me for dirt like why is it <laughs> he's being so rude it's stanley sat around waiting for more dialogue <laughs> but when a long time had passed and there was no more <laughs> he decided that the game was trying to send him a message <laughs> no wait what's this cup why can't i pick anything up okay but at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. No, I don't like that. I like it here. Do not lie. If you are lying right now, stop. Stanley was so bad at the <laughs> it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. You're not my boss. Why can't I pick anything up? Also, I'm really short. <laughs> My Stanley is um, freaking chaotic. Uh. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please. Stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. What? This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. What do you want me to do? Just go through here? Who's she? My lover? That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about... Get your day. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? They want to commit their life to you. I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. What? 
This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. No! <sighs> Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. But in his mind, ah, in his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown, fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. I don't know, man. Why would I want to watch TV? And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day what? while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. Spend time with the boys? So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. As he wandered through what this is fantasy happening? world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Pendle. Oh, okay. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again. And then again. And again. Over and over. Oh. Wishing beyond hope that it would never end. That he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path. Mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. Mm. <laughs> Tell your wife you love her. But there is no answer. No. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. Stop. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Thank you, Bella. This is meditative. Here's to one glorious year and great choice of game. Red, thank you so much for the one year. Thank you. Appreciate ya. Booby crying in the background.
I pressed H. It didn't work. K L M N O P Q R S T U V. I'm trapped. Help, I'm trapped. You see, can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? Yeah, <laughs> Morgana, thank you for the 18 months. That's a lot of months. I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. Aww. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. Aww. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried. I think I died. I believe I perished, right? Oh. Oh, cute. Francis, thank you for the prime sub. Three months. Please die. All right. Let me try again. I got it this time. All of his co-workers were gone. I'm not sure. What did it mean? Yeah, I know. That's Stanley so weird, right? To go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Right. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he <laughs> entered the door. Hi, Shin. Left. Okay, I'll do what you say. Yet there was not a single person here either. Tips for not Feeling getting fired. Of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Let it fall up inside you, take it out passive aggressively on other co-workers. Resent co-workers for not supporting you more. Make sure your slide has a slick blue graphic in the header and throw some... <laughs> on all text this will ensure a calm and productive work environment oh my god everyone is unique you most of all oh my god i love this my first and yeah that was my first ending I'm sorry, it scared me. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Meg got the most metal one first. Oh, Coming I love to that. A staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I see red down there. It's exciting. Can I have that? But Stanley just couldn't do it. Oh my he god, let's get the in. Possibility of facing his boss. Let's get Admitting in. He had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for Let's that. get in, babies. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. Yeah. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. Ominous. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? <laughs> why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? No! And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty Yeah, familiar. they are. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't no. be real. 
and at last he came to the conclusion that had been As on the Stanley tip of his Bonded, tongue. He knew he the only smart thing to do was to sub to I'm dreaming! He yelled. <laughs> this is all a dream! Oh, thank you for the oh, 35 what a months! Relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he let me in the car. Flying, oh, I'm about to die, aren't I? Above the ground. I'm about to die. And then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so <gasps> much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? Oh, and then perhaps the strangest question of them all pretty. entered Stan's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stan, <laughs> oh who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about These how are my it's dreams in a my nutshell. Thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Why are Stanley you is ripping me to right shreds? Now, as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was, in fact, a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself, too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. Okay, this, this is literally dream. reading so he closed me. closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. Oh my god. The press of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. Stop. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment. And my wife. The wife is a lie. Job. The wife is a lie. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Oh, the quiver in his voice. Stanley began screaming. Oh. Please, someone wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. <laughs> That's literally my brain. This oh, my God. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What? <laughs> Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, Oops. gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously <laughs> crazy. Music? This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension the rest of her life she had no time for this so it was only a moment that she stood there staring down at the body and then she turned and ran hi rex good 
to see you. Uh oh, I'm obsessed. Okay, I'm gonna do as he says. I promise. All his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he. I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do what he says. I promise. I promise. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I don't know though. <laughs> Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up, up. to his boss's okay, office, up, up. hoping he might find an answer there. Oh no. oh no, 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 not again. I won't be part of this. I'm not going to encourage you. I'm not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to be patient and wait for you to finish whatever it is you enjoy doing so much in this room. Please take your time. <laughs> okay, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Coming to a staircase, <laughs> Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Oh, red. Oh, God. A ba oh, because the boss knows that what the boss says goes. If the boss has suffered losses, then that's what the boss chose. What the hell? Why is it so large? Uh, oh, what? Business strategy? That's an elevator. Oh my god. I am the most expensive boss. <laughs> oh my god. <gasps> Why is it so tall? Stepping into the manager's piano? office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked? Unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. I'm gonna listen to you. I think you're trying to help me. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons. Maybe on he really keypad, does want to help Stanley me. Happened to input the correct code by sheer. We're line. working together. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Um. Uh. What button do I press? Hey, what button do I press? Oh, I guess only... Oh, only down. Mario pointing the gun. I love that. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest. Boomy is going crazy. I don't know why. Himself to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Please? Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. The door behind him was not shut. 
Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. <laughs> oh. motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise he reflected that his life had been of no consequence oh, no. <laughs> Stanley can't see the bigger picture he doesn't know the real story trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is perhaps his death was of no great loss like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man and so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life farewell Stanley Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed what? every bone in his body, killing him instantly. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? Oh my god, this is so cool. <gasps> when every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he Nature hit start? Nature painting? I saw some of these in that, in the rec room. Credits? Aww. The two doors. The set of the two open doors was the very first concrete piece of the Stanley Parables design. Aww. That's cute. Filing cabinets. Ah, oh, the pacing of this opening section was important to get right. The corridor had been moved and altered to make sure the player reaches the two doors in good time. This blueprint shows the office from the beginning of the game. The path from Stanley's office to the two doors was the first part of the game that was built. Oh, Stanley's computer. Well, this is a nice way to die. I like this way to die. <laughs> this is a museum. Button sounds. A selection of the sounds used throughout the game. Oh. Office computers. Chart Pro. Solitaire, baby. Good job, devs. Which way should I go? <laughs> boss's office. Screens from the development of the boss's office. Nice. Office clock. Cool. It's over here. Lounge. Underground. Now look closely, Stanley. See how it's impossible for the player to do anything oh. in this room. Perfect example of poor level design. Two Text years! It's the kind of thing you'd pick up on intuitively if you had even the most fundamental understanding of good and bad game design. But of course, you being you, you'll probably spend the next hour trying to solve it. Here, I'm just going to make this easy on you. That's so cute. Maybe it'll tell me how to beat this game. It's looked different each time. Nice. Oh my god, that's so cool. Maintenance room. 
I don't know if I've been there. Am I spoiling it for myself? Oh, okay, okay. Let's get out. How do I get out? How do I get out? <laughs> I didn't mean to go here. I don't want spoilers. How do I die? Get me out. Here we go. <laughs> oh. Oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. I would rather find it the stuff organically. Honestly. I don't really Can care you about see? Can you see how much they need one another? Oh. No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save those two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Okay, I'm going to listen to him. Okay, I'm going to listen to him this time, I promise. All of his co-workers were gone. Okay. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. I'm going to listen to him. A memo. The Stanley Pancake, hell yeah. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, and then boss's, boss's office. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, <laughs> Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Oh my god! <laughs> hey! That's so nice! <laughs> What's wrong with you? I liked it in there! Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs <laughs> to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on Certificate the boss's of desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Yeah, he's probably playing. He's so loud. Whoa. I don't think I want to go that way. I'm listening. I'm listening. Okay. I'm listening to him. I'm doing as he says. Do y'all blame me, though? Because look. It said escape. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. And then what? And then what did I do? The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Okay. 
Employee observation protocol. Now the monitors jump to life. Their true nature um. revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This must be HR. <laughs> This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! Don't fall off! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, <gasps> the heart of the operation. No. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. Aww. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. How? Facility power. I don't think I want to go into that red place, huh? And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Blackness, and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? Oh. How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. Oh. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, oh. it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. <gasps> Stanley so felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Please don't be a joke. <gasps> oh, I got an achievement. Beat the game. That's so sweet. <gasps> oh, 
I know that's not beating the game, but that was so precious. And that's really sweet. I, I'm definitely interested in everything else. And if I had just done as I was told, I would have gotten free. Oh, it's the story the narrator wanted to... Oh, okay. So we're going to put a pin on this for right now. Well, there might be a better ending. Well, the thing is, like, I didn't trust the narrator at first, but then I did. Like, it's like a very interesting little relationship that they have that I want to keep exploring.